Today, we're gonna to show you how to hack a Tesla car in under two minutes. And best of all, how you don't need a big ginger beard to do it. It's episode eight of Let's Talk CyberSec. Let's talk about cyber. Sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about cyber. Sex. Let's talk about cyber. Sex. Okay, guys, so this week in the news, two chaps from a Norwegian-based security firm called Promon have produced a two-minute uh, video about how to hack a Tesla car. Now, um, before we dive into the video, uh, there's a couple of points. First off, this hack isn't specific to Tesla or necessarily the Tesla app. Um, although they do point out vulnerabilities within the Tesla app that, that should have been secure. More on that later. Um, they've done it to demonstrate just how simple it is to do if manufacturers don't start putting security top of their priority list. And we at Forces here are all for that. So let's delve into the video and see what this is all about. The security of the internet connected devices that we use in our daily lives let me just jump in here. No prizes at all for guessing who's going to be technically carrying out the attack during the video. Heavily depends on the apps used to access, monitor and control the devices. I will show an easy way how to you can obtain the username and password that a Tesla owner is using to log into the Tesla app and use that to control his car. What I've done now is I've created a free Wi-Fi hotspot that displays an advertisement that's targeted towards Tesla owners that uh, says that if you install this free app, you can get a free burger at the restaurant close by. Social engineering at its finest. So I can see now here Lars has uh, logged into my Wi-Fi hotspot. What happened now is that uh, Lars uh, was tricked to install an app on his phone. The app installed malware on his phone and that malware is manipulating the Tesla app on his device so that when Lars uh, logs into the app, um, it will send this username and password to me. Right, let me point out a couple of things here. The app is susceptible to attack by a couple of um, means once they've installed um, the malicious app on the phone. Um, first off, the app um, should have been detected that it's been modified. It hasn't done that. Second of all, the authentication token should not be stored in clear text, um, which allows them to replace it um, with um, another token that forces the user to log in again. And when they do that, their username and password gets sent off to their server. Um, and they should be considering using two-factor authentication, so none of this could happen. Uh, and finally, uh, Tesla could Think about using not um, the built-in keyboard but their own keyboard um, to stop malicious apps actually um, key logging what's going on as they as they log into the app they didn't use that method this time that's uh, something um, that could happen anyway onwards so now here i can see uh, where he uh, where he actually is and let's just wait and see uh, where he's parking if i was really a criminal i would have done this not during the day walking around with a big laptop but i would probably use a small phone or something, but this is just a demonstration, right? Let's see, I think it should be over there. Okay, there you see, that's the car. Let's see what we can do with it. And now the last thing I have to do, I have to... Put your seatbelt on. Be able to drive the car without having the key. Ah. That's also possible. The keyless driving is enabled, which means we can just drive off with the car. Let's try. And that's how easy it was. We have full control of the Tesla and can just drive over with it. So there you have it, guys. That is how you hack a Tesla car in two minutes. Now, obviously it's gonna take you longer in real terms, but the video explainer is two minutes in length and we'll put a link down below so you can click it and watch the full length video in your own time. Now, the, one of the main points that the, the guys are uh, coming up with here 
is that, although I'm sure it will help, having uh, some big facial hair isn't going to help hack into a Tesla. It's actually very, very simple. And manufacturers of cars, of uh, house locking systems, kettles, in fact, anything that involves uh, mobile devices or the Internet of Things, they don't put security top of the agenda and it becomes pretty simple to start exploiting those apps. Tesla should have followed best practice security recommendations and in my mind there is no excuse for them not to do that. We all know when it comes to end users we can't trust for them not to be hungry, for them not to want that free burger or for them not to want to click on a video of dancing pigs. And I'm not having a go at Tesla here. I'm sure there's plenty of other companies that have developed apps um, to the same standards, if not worse. But an organization, especially those responsible for large asset items, have a responsibility to put security top of their agenda. By making the app in accordance with industry best practices, it would be fair to say it's going to be a lot harder to hack the Tesla in the first place, um, both from a time point of view and technically much bigger mountain to climb. So please, if you're in charge of security in your organization, take proactive steps to ensure the data held on customers' devices is just as safe as the data held on your own company's servers. Do that, don't worry about the beard, and we'll see you again next week.